Welcome back. Right, I'm really excited about this next item because it's the biggest and bestest thing Fifth Gear has ever done. Hell yeah. Check this out. Who remembers these? Hot Wheels Loop the Loop. Come on, Tom. Send one down. There we go. Yes. But what we wanted to know is could you do that in a real-life family-sized car? Yeah, we gave the job to our friendly neighbourhood stuntman, Steve Trulia, but we wanted some questions answering first. How fast would he have to go? Would the car stick to the road? And would he black out under the G-forces? Steve Trulia is the man facing this monster challenge. As Fifth Gear's head of danger, he's rolled, crashed and crashed again in numerous Fifth Gear stunts. But even by these extreme standards, nothing can prepare him for our most dangerous stunt yet. Clearly, scaling a toy up to a record-breaking 40 feet high using five tons of steel and a real-life motor was going to be dangerous. So we sent Steve to Cambridge University's Dr. Hugh Hunt to find out how fast he'd have to go. Now listen carefully. Two R plus a half V in squared. It's starting to cook my brain a bit now. 36 About miles 36 per hour. 36 miles an hour. But you know what we haven't worked out though? What's that? Is we, what are the G-forces you're going to experience? Because you want to know whether you're going to black out or not. The total G-force you will experience as you enter this loop will be 6G. It gives me a bit more confidence because of the science, but at the end of the day, I don't know if that's going to count when I'm staring at the track with my foot in the accelerator. To lessen the chances of Steve blacking out at the wheel, he needed to get used to pulling 6G. The only place to do that was in this. Stunt day. The day Fifth Gear finds out if you really can drive a car around a 40-foot high loop the loop. If successful, stuntman Steve Trulia will set a new world record. If he fails and falls out of the loop, the massive deceleration forces as he hits the ground could be fatal. The entry speed is therefore literally a matter of life or death. So Steve verified the car's speedo with GPS. 36, 37. And then checked again with a calibrated radar gun. 36 miles an hour had been calculated as the ideal entry speed. Slower than this and he'd fall. Much faster and the G-forces would knock him unconscious and exert a dangerous force on the ramp structure. The Toyota Igo Steve had chosen for the stunt had been heavily modified to make it strong enough and hopefully safe enough should things go wrong. Here we go, this is it. This is it, we're all going in too fast. And here we go. was so light at the top, I really thought I'd lost it. I felt weightless, I thought, I'm falling. I'm so glad that I played in touch with the road all the way around. As soon as I left the ramp, just a complete feeling of joy and elation. Dr Hugh Hunt's analysis revealed how close we'd come to disaster. Just 2.5 miles an hour slower and Steve would have fallen. And here we go. One mile an hour faster and the extra friction caused by the scraping would have made him fall as well. Steve hit it spot on, so take a moment to savour the world record for driving a car around the largest loop-the-loop. -loop. Chances are you'll never see it executed so perfectly ever again.